Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to the Video Guide to Drakenheim. In this six-part series, we're going to be showing you how to run a Dungeons of Drakenheim campaign for 5th edition. This is part one, and it is a special video because it is geared towards the players for character creation in the worlds of Drakenheim. Dungeon Masters may also want to check this out just to get a feel for how character creation might go and what they might need to keep in mind with their players creating Drakenheim-themed characters. So for you Dungeon Masters out there, this will be a helpful guide to walking your characters through the, the character creation process, and you can feel free to share this video with your players out there. So with all that in mind, let's dive into the world of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. Struck by falling stars upon that woeful eve, the death and destruction were nothing to the madness and terror left behind. Strange crystals lie amidst the forsaken ruins. Fiercely sought by sorcerers and scoundrels. For the shards command a high price indeed. Their magic can forge powerful weapons. But their whispers inspire occult worship. While rival factions struggle to rule the rubble, Horrific monsters stalk the haunted streets. What do you seek in that accursed place? Riches? Renown? Revenge? The destiny of the Dark City is yours to decide. If you survive, the Dungeons of Drakenheim. Welcome to Dungeons of Drakenheim. This campaign for 5th edition is going to take your characters on adventures through the ruined, monster-filled streets of Drakenheim. Your characters will explore haunted manors, baroque cathedrals, decrepit gardens, ancient castles, and deep, flooded sewers as you plunder treasures and solve mysteries in the city. But while your characters are on the path through the streets of Drakenheim, they will also have to interact with five rival factions who are struggling to rule the rubble of Drakenheim. Each faction has their own goals and ideals that will conflict with each other. Who the characters decide to ally with and who becomes their enemy is up to the choices that they make in a Drakenheim campaign. Beyond the agents and warriors of the five factions, your characters will contend with the horrific monsters that haunt the city streets of Drakenheim, inspired by creatures from dark fantasy and cosmic horror in these otherworldly ruins. So now the question is for you creating a character out there, with all of these horrible monsters and dangerous ruins and rival factions, why would somebody come to Drakenheim? When Drakenheim was destroyed 15 years ago, the falling stars left behind iridescent crystals of vast magical energy. Now these crystals are known as delirium, and today all manner of sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards crave their arcane power. These crystals fetch a high price on the market, so even non-magical folk are willing to venture into the ruins to gain these crystals to sell off to those who need them. However, these crystals can also induce madness or contamination or create monstrous transformations of those who spend too much time in the dangerous ruins. Many adventurers and prospectors risk everything to recover just a few crystals given their high price, but the true origin of these crystals where the meteor came from, and what the full effects of delirium are, are still a mystery. Between the rival factions that you're going to be interacting with, there seems to be a disagreement on what to do with delirium. Some factions want to destroy it, some worship it, some want to use it to create new and improved magic items and spells, while other factions might be less interested in delirium itself, but more interested in what Drakenheim represents. Drakenheim was the cosmopolitan capital of the nation of Westamar, but when the city was destroyed 15 years ago, the king, the queen, and their heirs never made it out of the city. Their true fates are unknown. When the royal family fell, 
This started a civil war between the two siblings of the von Kessel family, the royal family of Drakenheim. This war lasted 10 years. However, through many assassinations and accidents, all members of the von Kessel family are thought to be dead. As a result, the royal line has been broken and the political order of Westamar lies in shambles. Between these military conflicts and religious schisms, only a faint hope remains that the city can be restored and the realm rebuilt. During the campaign, your player characters are going to need to decide what is to be done with Delirium and what the outcome of Drakenheim is going to be in terms of this broken realm. Where does the crown of Westamar lie? Are there any remaining Von Kessels or should somebody new take the throne? Even if your character isn't interested in the conflicts of magic and, and monarchs, there are many personal reasons for your character to head into the city. We have designed 12 personal quests to help tie your characters to the themes of Drakenheim. These quests might involve heading to the city to find a lost loved one who has perhaps got lost in the ruins or joined one of the factions. Perhaps your goals are to overthrow or join one of the factions, assassinate their leaders, or you might be there on behalf of one of the factions to investigate delirium and find out its true properties and power. Or maybe you yourself are a lost heir to the throne of Drakenheim or representing one. There are myriad other reasons why your character might have come to the city of Drakenheim. And we've given a guide for you to work with your dungeon master that even if you don't want to choose one of the 12 personal quests, you can devise your own custom personal quest for your character as well. The most important thing to consider when you are making a character for the Drakenheim campaign though, is that people who aren't willing to risk their lives for something don't come to Drakenheim. The city is filled with danger and your chances of survival are not guaranteed. When making a character for a Drakenheim campaign, it's essential that you create a character who is willing to take some risks to get what they want from the Dark City. As you venture into the ruins of Drakenheim with your personal quest in mind, you're going to realize that the city is far too dangerous to go alone. Even a small band of heroes will need the help of somebody. And this is where the five rival factions come into play. No matter what your personal quest is, seeking the aid of one, two, or more of these factions is going to be important to navigating the ruins, fulfilling your goals, and surviving the dangers of Drakenheim. Just be careful, because some personal quests may send your character into direct conflict with some of the goals of the factions as well. But in the meantime, let's meet the five factions and their leaders. The first of our five factions is the Hooded Lanterns. This is a military regiment who is trying to reclaim the city of Drakenheim. Made up of the remnants of the Civil War and the City Watch, this guerrilla group of soldiers is setting out into the ruins of Drakenheim in hopes of saving their home, reclaiming the city, and hopefully in the process, discovering a long lost heir. Several of the nobles still loyal to House von Kessel have banded together to fund the regiment, which is led by the dour Lord Commander Elias Drexel. Beyond the monsters of the city, the Hooded Lanterns have had a major problem recently in the form of the Queen's Men. Dozens, if not hundreds of bandit gangs have been picking over the ruins of Drakenheim, and they have all been banded together by the mysterious and enigmatic Queen of Thieves. The Queen's Men are notorious for shaking down adventurers and pilgrims, uh, sabotaging the other faction's plans. Their goal is to turn Drakenheim into a bandit city, where they can rule as they see fit. From the distant realm of Illyria come the Knights of the Silver Order. These oath-bound paladins serve the faith of the Sacred Flame. The divine matriarch of the Sacred Flame has seen the, delir the corruption of delirium and has declared it an abomination. Led by the righteous Knight Commander Theodore Marshall, the Silver Order has come to the city in hopes of destroying delirium at any cost, even if it means burning the city to the ground. However, not all of those who worship the Sacred Flame agree, and some saw the meteor as a sign. A breakaway sect of the Sacred Flame has emerged, known as the Followers of the Falling Fire, who heed the prophecies of the Flamekeeper Lucretia Matthias. They believe that the delirium is not corrupt, but it is in fact a divine gift, heaven sent 
to bolster the mortal souls against an even greater darkness yet to come. The followers of the Falling Fire make pilgrimages to Drakenheim, seeking the guidance of Lucretia Matthias and hoping to find their righteous path by journeying to the crater's edge itself. While the followers of the Falling Fire hold these magical rocks as sacred, there are others in the city who see the magical potential that Delirium holds. And this brings us to the Amethyst Academy, an organization mostly comprised of sorcerers and wizards who study the rocks and use it to create amazing magical items and new spells. The Amethyst Academy is the foremost organization for magical study, research, and the creation of magic items across the entire continent. The shadowy directorate of the Amethyst Academy has sent the archwizard Eldrick Runeweaver to lead their expeditions into the ruins where they hope to find the true potential of what Delirium can do for magical users in the world. So as you create your character for Dungeons of Drakenheim, you need to keep in mind these five factions and which ones feel like they are the right choice to ally with and which ones might become your enemies. Each faction has something that they can offer your party, but also has dark secrets that might change your mind about them. So no matter which faction you choose, be prepared to navigate this intricate web of faction conflict. So with all of this in mind, what else do you need to know to create your character in Drakenheim? If you're looking for more information on the city, the factions, and the world at large, there are a few sections of the book that are spoiler-free and safe for you to check out as a player character. So talk to your DM about reading the following sections. These include Chapter 1, The Introduction, the Appendix E, The World of Drakenheim, which is a larger gazetteer to the wider world if you really want to dive into the whole setting. And finally, Appendix F, which includes character backgrounds that can really tie your characters to the world of Drakenheim. These include many options to flesh out your character's personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws that will directly tie them to the setting of Drakenheim. Although the world surrounding Drakenheim is vast, the campaign itself is focused on the city of Drakenheim only. And so the entire campaign happens in the city of Drakenheim and its immediate environment. When you set out to create a character for, for Dungeons of Drakenheim, talk to your dungeon master about what options for 5th edition they're going to allow in their campaign. Characters of any class can be found in the world of Drakenheim, and there's a diverse array of people who inhabit this world. Although the wider world of Drakenheim is more of a low fantasy, low magic world, Drakenheim has attracted all manner of strange and eclectic people to plunder its ruins. Although humans make up the majority of the people that you will find in the world of Drakenheim, this doesn't limit the race options presented to player characters. Again, your character could be from anywhere in the world, and Drakenheim might attract a wide array of peoples to its environments. And at the same time, when you're choosing your class that you're going to play, don't feel like you are beholden to link it to a certain faction. Although the Silver Order is comprised of mostly paladins, you might be a paladin from a different area of the world who worships perhaps one of the old gods or a different deity. Or if you're a ranger, you do not have to be from the Hooded Lanterns. Every class option is available in the worlds of Drakenheim, and you should feel encouraged to make up how you're tied to the world, even outside of the factions that we have presented. That said, for those interested in a deep dive, there are four things about the world of Drakenheim that are a little bit different from the core assumptions of 5th edition. So you might want to keep these in mind depending on what sort of character you're making. First of all, the world of Drakenheim is one where the gods are distant. They don't communicate with mortals, they don't manifest in the world, and no one really knows the true nature of divinity. Instead, this is a world of diverse religions and varying beliefs, and even amongst the dominant religion of the area, the faith of the, of the sacred flame, many people believe different things about that core faith. Even divine spellcasting is not a gift from the gods. Through worship and tradition, druids, clerics, and paladins gain their powers by tapping into the forces of light and shadow. So even violating the tenets of your faith may not cause your characters to lose their powers. However, if your character experiences their own personal crisis of faith during the campaign, that might. Also in the world of Drakenheim, individuals cannot become arcane spellcasters like wizards through study alone. In the world of Drakenheim, most arcane magic is a genetic trait that is passed down through the generations. So wizards are actually just sorcerers who have tapped into their power through study and practice rather than relying on their innate abilities. 
What's important about this is that in the world of Drakenheim, while arcane magic isn't outlawed, it is tightly controlled by the Amethyst Academy, and arcane spellcasters like sorcerers and wizards cannot have a noble title. And finally, on your adventures in Drakenheim, if you're looking to hire cavalry and heroes, you're it. There aren't very many high-level NPCs that exist in the worlds of Drakenheim. In this setting, your characters represent the heroes who will become the most powerful people, potentially, in the worlds of Drakenheim. So if you're looking for resources and help, it's up to you and the factions that you choose to ally with. There's no going outside of Drakenheim hoping to find a 20th level cleric to resurrect the party. You're going to have to deal with the people that you meet along the way, near and in the city of Drakenheim. So, to summarize, you have your personal quest that you've chosen for your character, any race and class option that you've chosen, and you can refer to the two appendixes involving the character backgrounds and the world of Drakenheim for more depth to add to your character. But there's a few more questions that you should keep in mind as you're creating your character for Drakenheim. Did your character grow up in Drakenheim? If so, where did they live? Maybe look at the city map with your dungeon master and see where they might have grown up. If they were living in and around the area of the city when the meteor hit, what happened to their family? Or if they're from a far away land, did they leave their family behind? We have found that family can be one of the most interesting things to explore in the world of Drakenheim. So keep in mind where you came from and what you're looking for. Now, it has been 15 years since the city of Drakenheim was destroyed, and there was 10 years of civil war in the intervening period. What has your character been doing in those past 15 years, and why are they coming back to Drakenheim now? You should also think of the five factions represented in the campaign and come up with a brief one sentence idea on what your character thinks about each one. Are there ones that they seem to like more on the offset of the campaign? Ones that they think are going to be villains? These opinions are open to change throughout the campaign, but going in with a mindset on your character's opinions is very helpful. Second, you also want to consider your closest allies, the other player characters. Consider creating a close relationship with your character and another one of the other player characters. Perhaps the two of you are siblings or childhood friends, or have a shared mission or relationship to one of the factions. The characters that you're creating are going to be the main protagonists of the story, and therefore are allowed to be an exception to the rules set by the rest of the world. Work with your DM, talk about how you imagine your character coming to life in the campaign, and work with them to weave them into the narrative. We've left the wider world of Drakenheim very open-ended, so there's lots of space for you and your dungeon master to work together to make a creative explanation for your character's origin. If you've got some wild and off-the-wall ideas for your characters in, in Drakenheim, that's okay, and you can explore them in this setting. But if you do want to tightly fo follow the lore that we've laid out and created for the world of Drakenheim as well, you can also dive into all of our appendixes, character backgrounds, and personal quests, and really make a character that feels like a part of the world too. And finally, with your hero ready to set forth into the worlds of Drakenheim, we have a few warnings to put before you, just to make you extra prepared for what you might encounter. The ruins of Drakenheim are cloaked in a strange mist that emanates deadly contaminating energies. Known as the Haze, these mists extend out through the city ruins and surround it for miles around. Long-term exposure to these mists is dangerous for anyone, so there is no taking a long rest within the city of Drakenheim. So expect to take expeditions into the city, but always have a plan to get back out again. Also be aware that delirium, as well as many of the monsters and environments in the city of Drakenheim, emanate deadly eldritch contamination. The rules for contamination are rather similar to the rules for exhaustion. As your character gains contamination levels, you'll have debilitating effects, but you also might mutate in strange ways. Keep in mind that the mutation and contamination caused by delirium affects not only flesh, but stone and steel and everything that it comes into contact with. There are no character options that can prevent this, and more so than that, spells like Lesser or greater restoration or cure disease or others of that type have no effect on contamination. This is a new and alien substance in the world, and so discovering how to mitigate and deal with it is part of the campaign setting and something that you'll have to discover as you work with the factions and move through the campaign. There are new spells and magic items for you to unlock during your adventures that will help you deal with contamination and the haze during your adventures. But through it all, be, be warned, 
if your character does reach contamination level 6, you will undergo a monstrous transformation and become a horrific abomination under the control of the Dungeon Master. Not the best way for your character's story to end. Also keep in mind with this campaign that because of the open-ended nature of your journeys into the city, you will be facing dangers that might be beyond the scope of your characters. There is no clear path to your goals in Drakenheim. You'll have to discover those on your own, and working with the factions is an important part of the campaign. So while some enemies might seem beyond you at first, gathering the Hooded Lanterns or the Silver Order by your side to take them on might give you the edge in combat. Running away is always a valid option. And of course, if you are looking for a temporary respite or safe haven, be sure to head to Emberwood Village. This small village outside the ruins of Drakenheim and outside the Haze is a place for your characters to restock and resupply between your adventures. It's also neutral ground where you can meet with other adventuring parties and agents from all the factions and make alliances, find new quests, find new objectives. It's also a place where you'll be able to purchase magic items, potions, adventuring equipment, sell the loot that you find in the ruins, and maybe pick up on an interesting rumor or two that could lead you to further adventures. Keep in mind as you set forth into the dangerous ruins of Drakenheim that you may want to talk to your DM about the content that you might experience in this campaign. We have a bit of a content warning for the way that we have presented it in the book. We portray Drakenheim as a dark fantasy world, and we recommend that players and game masters work together during Session Zero to discuss their lines and veils. But for reference, here's a few of the types of content that are present in the book as we've written it. Violence, murder, blood, gore, cannibalism, and body horror. Degenerative mutations that cause physical disfigurement and madness and insanity. There are rats, spiders, insects, demons, undead, ghosts, and lots of monsters. There's also natural disasters, large-scale loss of life, civil war, displaced persons, and refugees. Finally, Drakenheim has lots of moral ambiguity, social and political conflict, religious zealotry, and themes of military nationalism. Although your DM has final say in how all of this is interpreted and the tone of the game that's being run at your table, just feel free to talk to your dungeon master about anything that you might be uncomfortable with as you set forth into the horror-ridden streets of Drakenheim. This is a campaign designed around themes of cosmic horror and dark fantasy, so expect those tropes to be prominent in the setting. Ultimately, Drakenheim is an open-ended campaign where your player characters will be the one who drive the action and ultimately decide their fates and the fate of Drakenheim as a whole. Will you side with the Knights of the Silver Order and burn Drakenheim to the ground, or will you work with the Amethyst Academy to discover the potential of the magic of delirium? Will you bring about a new age with the followers of the Falling Fire, or restore the throne with the Hooded Lanterns, or leave the city in a place of anarchy by giving in to the whims of the Queen of Thieves? All of this and more is yours to decide, and you and your fellow players might even blaze new ground over the course of the campaign, coming up with an inventive solution that resolves the faction conflict, solves the personal quest of your player characters, and decides the fate of Drakenheim in a way that Kelly and I never could have foreseen. So enjoy diving in to the dungeons of Drakenheim, and we will see you soon in the ruins.